Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanios here. Welcome to episode number 12 of this NHL 20 Custom League franchise mode. Or not Custom League. Oh my goodness, it's been forever. Canadian Cup Challenge. My bad, guys, with the Halifax Islanders. Before we jump into the video, if you're new to the channel and haven't yet, please go down below and consider subscribing. We're trying to grow the channel to a thousand subs here. And honestly, if we hit a thousand subs, I'm going to start putting way more effort into it because I am going to have some source of income coming from the channel. So that's my main motivation right now. But anyways, we're keeping the quality of the content up. Let's get into this video. So if you guys are new to this series or missed any episodes, I suggest you go up into the top corner right up here right now, and there will be a playlist to the entire series so you can check out whatever you missed. But last episode, guys, we were able to uh, get through the draft, made some good moves, and uh, really this is how the team looks now. It's insane. Um, the only reason why we haven't moved Othman in exchange for you know salary cap and possibly signing other players is because we are trying to win right now we're not so worried about contracts on a long-term basis for a lot of players obviously yes we do get deals on Bedard there for nine million bucks and you know a lot of these guys are on sick contracts like Cole Perfetti under 10 million bucks for the next seven years is insane 8.8 .8 million bucks for Byfield's crazy. Uh, we still have four years left on Jamie Barker at just 8.8 .8 million. Lafreniere was expensive, but that was expected as he is our number one kind of franchise corner piece player there, along with the defenseman. And then Othman got paid too much for where he's at right now, which is too bad. But, you know, we are going to have Wheeler cycling into the lineup here over the next couple of seasons, and uh, he's going to grow like freaking crazy here on the line that he's with. Um, I know this doesn't look like the craziest lineup, especially since this is all left wingers on the bottom line, but it's going to work out still. We're going to be fine. The defense is sick, obviously. Uh, we've changed Harrison O'Brien to an offensive defenseman, so we'll see if that cranks his numbers up. Obviously, he's a sick defenseman anyways. 351 points in his first, what, six seasons, I guess? two four seven seasons damn okay so he's not scoring quite where we wanted him to be but that's okay um because you know he is one of our alternates he's one of those you know crazy good franchise players still and uh obviously paired with Othman he's gonna be sick this is a one-two punch literally from two years apart in the draft they're insane then we got Lambos and uh Malay on the second pairing obviously they get plus one chem because they're both two-way and then you know an offensive and a defensive with Pouliot and Mercier is great i mean we did change mercier to a defensive to get that chemistry boost but it's also really good for the power or for the penalty kill and stuff like that and then obviously the goaltending is just sexy right now we're going to have pascal brisebois jump up into the league at the end of this season there's no question about it he's at 78 rated at just 21 years old he had a sick season man 16 wins in 21 games 9.1 or 0.915 save percentage blow it out of the water man great ahl season i honestly thought that Tristan Lennox was going to just skyrocket to like an 82 or something like that after a 40 win season on a nine or point nine eleven save percentage. Like that's crazy, man. He hasn't had those kind of numbers since he was in the OHL and still just didn't grow. So it's like, shoot. Okay. Like it happens. He can't do much. Um, a bunch of these guys will be making the NHL in the next couple seasons, whether that be Gail Daly, who looks really awesome for our system fit, or Alexandre Bouchard. He's going to be our third line power forward most likely in the future, so that's awesome. Uh, defensive, well, defensively wise, um, Isaac Enright and Ethan Del Mastro. Look at how big Del Mastro is. He's 6'5", 225 at just 23 years old. He's going to literally kill players as a third pairing defenseman he's going to be a penalty killing type of guy we might change him to more of a defensive role just to get more chemistry but um yeah man that's going to be sick we're going to have some awesome players coming into the system here and right might eventually even end up on like a second pairing i doubt it um obviously both these guys we brought in from separate teams they were only drafted eight picks apart in the same draft so that's awesome and uh the future's still bright with the AHL. I know it's not as crazy potential as we've had in the past, but who cares? Because you look at our team in the NHL, and like the majority of these guys are under 23. Um, just absolutely awesome players. They're going to be for the next like long term here. This team is set up to win cups, not just based on our top lines, which is, you know, the main focus of this team, but we have depth too, and that is the thing that scares me and should be scaring everybody else in the league, which probably isn't, but who cares? We're going to kill them anyways. So um, 
I haven't done any drafting yet. I don't believe, I'm not sure what kind of draft class we're looking at for Canadians here. Looks like, okay, Ocposo, probably going to be an offensive defenseman. So, you know, maybe we'll look into him. Habsheed, we don't need. We got enough forwards. And honestly, Drury and, Se Drew Drury and Sagan are also defensemen in there in the top 10 that could potentially be really sick. Um, so who knows? We have somebody else's pick. I'm not exactly sure who right now. Let's just go double check that before the season starts here and we do all our drafting and everything. But um, yeah, we do have other teams' picks and not just our own, which is scary because that means we can potentially add even more, you know, lottery picks to this team. Not like we haven't had enough of them already. Like you look at this team, man. Starting from okay, McCallum was yeah, he was still a lottery pick, man. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, well, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11 lottery picks on our top players there. That's insane. And we do have Columbus's pick. Okay. So that was the trade we made last time. As as far as goalie value goes, man, Bruce Bois is right there with Hart. Obviously a huge age gap there, but that is awesome because that means as Carter Hart enters his prime, well, he's in his prime. As he starts to leave his prime, Bruce Bois will get into his prime. And that transition is going to be you know, seamless pretty much. And uh, we will you know, probably offload heart by the time Bruce Ball really starts to take off. Obviously, you know, a slightly smaller goalie, a little more compact with Bruce Ball, but he's going to be absolutely sick. Um, man, I'm so ready to get into the season. I'm just going to cut out here quickly, guys, get my scouting done, and then I'll be back with you guys for a quick little, you know, update, and then we'll be through the whole season here because we are doing, you know, mainly seasons at a time here with this series just to make it a slightly shorter series, but it's really like every episode is going to pack, be packed with quality content here. So anyways, I'll be back with you guys when I'm done my scouting. Let's see how it goes. Guys, that's the one thing I love about this series is that since, um, since it's a Canadian challenge, all we have to do is scout three leagues with six scouts and we nail it every time we get all the scouting report done. So I'm going to send to the regular season. Let's see how it turns out. All right, so let's check out the scouting report, guys. There is a defenseman ranked number one in this draft, and he is a... Okay, he's only an elite defenseman. Only an elite. <laughs> he's still a sick defenseman, but he's... Ned Venkateshin is uh, American, so that's not happening. Obviously, Jackson Ocposo... Ah, he's shooting pinch. So that's the, that's our hopes and dreams out the window with him there. That's too bad, but uh, that was kind of expected. Ouch, three years on Drury, but... What can you do? We are only going for Canadian. Ooh. Sylvain Fortier. It looks kind of nice. Anyways, um, I'm going to do a full season sim here, guys. I just want to show you how our team's looking nice and quick. Obviously, this is a very, very nice team here in Halifax for the 2026-27 season. But um, let's just check out this sim. And Oh, I simulated. My bad. Okay. Well, let's see how game one of our series. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not going to play guys, but I just want to show you our numbers and that we're somehow losing to Detroit. Um, but yeah, 98 offense, 94 defense and 89 goaltending. Uh, that's going to be where we cut it here. And I will see you guys at the end of the 2026 slash 27 season. Okay guys. Um, just to kind of cut in here quickly while we're, you know, in between the start and the end of the regular season. Um, we're just going to go through comments here and uh get them over with quickly here so uh data 782 says that top six is going to be nasty next year um next to next to mention with the chemistry bonuses yeah it's going to be insane um here we could switch over and uh, this does kind of spoil it for you guys because i have been checking this out all season or all sim so far but yeah bryson wheeler's been absolutely filthy so far crushing it as a rookie um Denise Gibbs said, nice lettuce. Wheeler was the pick of the draft for you, but in a couple seasons, trade Othman would be a really good idea. I know I spelled Othman wrong twice. Plus the dog barking in the background is 9K. Okay, I don't know exactly what 9K means, but oh, okay, instead of 9K. All right, I'm, I'm slow, sorry. Um, Dustin Wald said, yo, Etanios, I'd missed a few videos. Busy on the farm as summer and field work came around. Can't keep up laughing emoji uh still a supporter nonetheless keep it up and i'll keep on keeping on <laughs> let's go dustin i love to hear that um man i understand farm work i kind of live on a farm it's only five acres but yeah it's uh it's a lot of work still for sure 
So I totally understand that. Jared Sorhendo said, love the hair and keep up with the series. We are here. I know it's been a little while, but got to keep it going. Uh, Kaiser Plan 19 said, uh, that goalie has an incredible name. His name was Strombolopoulos. I went and checked it out for you guys. So uh, uh, the hockey analyst analyst said, love the hair. Also, I'm first for the first time. Um, yeah, awesome. Uh, that's Nikita Nazarov, if you guys don't remember. Let's see. He said, the luck that Montreal is getting for the second year in a row is insane. Hashtag first overall luck. Yeah, that's just crazy. Um, he said that was a great trade there. Bean being the guy that was traded to Columbus, two of the later first round picks could potentially be lottery picks in back to back years, which is insane. And I agree. I think it is insane. He said, yeah, head scratchers right there for both Vancouver and St. Louis as they both selected top six centers instead of the elite center named Porter there, which was, that was crazy. And Detroit got him somehow. Linebot said, great video, keep it up. Or great video as normal, keep it up. Um, MID said, I loved, I loved your channel. Keep it up. Um, Mr. Muffman said, great video. Etanios, keep up the good work, bud. Thank you so much. Blakey said, great video. Keep it up. And um, Sophia Perez said, will you do another Oilers franchise mode when NHL 21 is here? Absolutely. We totally are going to do another Oilers franchise mode. There's no question about that once NHL 21 is around. So anyways, that was it for comments, really, guys. Um, we're going to get back into the sim and see what this team can do. So guys, the Halifax Islanders actually have their worst season on record over the past four seasons, but at the same time, I do believe we still won the President's Trophy with only 117 points. No, we did not. The Blackhawks got one more point than us. Did that happen last year too? I think that actually might have. Who won the President's last year? That is a good question. Who was your President's Trophy winner? Oh, no, it was Buffalo last season. So, yeah, we've been kind of robbed here by one point. So, you know, it happens, but, like, dang it, man. Like, we're so close and we just don't quite get it. Okay, so let's go check out stats here as uh, Jamie Barker scores 101 points. Not bad. Um, we've seen better from him. 60-40 season there for Connor Bedard. Whew. He's actually our highest rated player now. There's no question about that. He's 94 rated. 94 dang man um 42 points for landon mccallum is sick but at the same time that sucks because he's going to request a crap ton of money here probably yeah shoot um i mean that happens right clark only scores 37 points that's pretty rough um obviously he's still had a sick season um and our goalies 43 for carter hart that's that's pretty solid um let's just double check what the league best was for you know points and wins and stuff like that so abel johnston scores 114 barker finishes fourth in league scoring there tied with sebastian aho and then bedard finishes tied with three other players um that's okay that's, that's pretty good but obviously you know 114 is pretty hard to beat there on that one guy um carter hart second in wins played six more games than vasilevsky and vasilevsky got one more one more win than he did that's crazy he had six less ot losses too so that kind of makes a difference i would assume vasilevsky yeah being third best and with 44 wins is probably going to be your um vesna winner 55 20 and 7 for the highlanders they finished first in the uh conference there besting tampa bay by a couple points and second in the league there just missing out by one one stinking overtime loss to the chicago blackhawks that's just a piss off man like it really is so yeah anyways what can you do what can you do our team's still sick top three in the league you know we've been top two in the league for the past four seasons in a row now that's just mind-blowing and uh yeah this team is still gonna make some noise in the playoffs no question about that we'll see how it goes though all right guys we are gonna get into the playoffs here um I don't know who we're going to go up against. It'll be interesting to see. Probably going to be the Senators, I would assume, as we're the second best team in the league and uh, first in the East. So we didn't get 30 home wins. That's kind of terrible, but whatever. Um, and yeah, we are going to take on the Senators first. Let's check out Ottawa. Obviously, we did kind of, we didn't rob them of a pick, but they uh, we, we got a lot of players that, you know, in real life are probably going to go to Ottawa. 
but you know they still got a decent lineup here no question about that um Vasily Ponomarev was a terrible pick by them and it's really cost them as they missed out on a number one center essentially um my goodness man this team is still absolutely filthy you cannot disclaim that enough and they got Petrangelo there still yikes man yikes okay um man if we lose to this team I'm sorry like if we lose to this team there's no superstars we've got like four um oh yeah here's here's how our team looks now guys okay this is with player growth um it's filthy it is absolutely disgusting there's no other way to put it that's a 97 rated Connor Bedard he's yeah um I'm expecting big numbers out of Bedard again this year um even just in one round if that's all that we go to but I doubt we'll get knocked out first round Carter Hart obviously got 13 wins last season didn't get the full 16 he did struggle a bit but let's see what happens here with the Ottawa Senators we are just going to advance day by day see what happens and game one is a win 4-2 three goals for Jamie Barker wow okay game two we are losing Jamie Barker to a mild concussion that's always awesome we still win game two five to three uh Lafreniere averaging two assists a game at this point but we're only two games into the playoffs game three heading back to Ottawa Carter Hart goes down with pulled groin and this is the injury bug here we go this is gonna be fun um no it's not so fortunately our AHL team is kind of out of order right now which means that we can uh we can definitely you know move a couple things around make things work here with the lineup still um you know sorry bryson actually you know what hold on hold on a second i think i know what we can do here all right let's go like that okay so that's a plus three let's go like really that's only a plus one really buddy we go like that toss lafreniere on the second line move perfetti to that's interesting that is an interesting lineup right now with the injuries and what's going on with our team that might actually just work all right let's go like that let's go cross for him all right that's average but with two injuries like what can you say we literally have no other choice right now like this like this and then oh no sorry not gilbert mercier here we want samuel morin out of here and toss pulio back in beautiful all right, and yeah, Comrie's going to be getting some game. Wow, Jesus. Um, Wait, what, seven point? How badly did we just lose? Did we just lose like 8-3 or something? 6-3, but still, what is 7.92 goals against average? That's terrible. All right. <sighs> game three, I'm hoping this lineup can get something done still. And... What happens in game four? 5 2 win. Let's go. Alexi Lafreniere comes through, averaging like a point and a half a game still, so that's awesome. And we are up 3 1, which is massive. Chicago sweeps the wild. So Chicago is obviously our main competition right now. And game five, can we knock them out? No, we cannot. All right, we're headed back to Ottawa for game six. Come on, boys. Let's knock them out now. <laughs> the injury bug has killed us. Come on, we got Jamie Barker back. Let's go. That's that's a big, big factor here. No question about that. Um, okay, let's try to get this lineup put back together now. Paquette is not helping the lineup whatsoever, but... Okay, let's go like that. Let's go like that and that. Wow, there's a lot of lineup changes we are making. But, you know, when this lineup is fully healthy and fully functioning, my goodness, I don't think there's a single team that can stand in the way in seven games here. But Ottawa's standing in the way right now because we're missing our number one goalie, which is no question. He's one of the best goalies in the league. So here we go. Um, we're simulating game seven because we could potentially get eliminated by the Senators after losing two games in a row. 2-2 two -two after the first, 3-2 for Halifax after the second. Byfield clutches up. Let's see here. So, if um, if we can just hold this lead, we'll be good. But uh, we are getting no shot pretty heavily right now. And power play for Ottawa. 
does not convert. Lafreniere scores on Djokovic instead. Come on, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Dylan Gunther. Massive goal. 6-2. Perfetti blows Ottawa out of the water. GG, boys. Um, we're moving on, but my goodness, that was, uh, that was too close. So guys, uh, heading into round two here, we got the Tampa Bay Lightning. Just a fun fact for you guys, uh, we have beat them two out of the last three seasons uh, where we have seen them in the second round, and uh, we beat them in five and six games in those two previous series. So I'm sure they're looking to kind of get a number on us, try to beat us. Trainer's nice, but no. Um, Tampa Bay, all right. Braden Point, Kucherov, Holtz. Holtz is pretty nice. Uh, they got Nick Ehlers there as well. Nick Merkley, Nolan Foot, Jesse Pulley-Yarvey's in there. Interesting. Sergeyev, Hedman. Wow, Hedman is really up there in age. 36 years old, but Vasilevsky, obviously the number one player on this team, I would say. He definitely had the most incredible regular season. So here we go. Um, taking on Tampa Bay round two. Hopefully this goes as smoothly as it has in the past. And game one. We win 6-2. to two. Beautiful. All right. Heading into game two now. We lose 4-3. to three. Ouch. That's a close one, man. You got to win those ones. All right. Game three. We win 4-1. to one. Pretty big margin there still. Game four. We win 5-2. to two. All right. And we have a chance to knock out Tampa Bay in just six games here. Or sorry, just five games. My bad. And uh, looks like Columbus has been the strong team here in the east uh vegas is through and chicago is through all right interesting so here we go game five do we knock them out on home ice no we do not we lose three to two one goal game again boys come on all right game six we win all right so we knock them out in six games looks like columbus and new york are going to seven there everybody else finished their series in either four five or six games all right so we're definitely getting one of like a different length of series for each series here. So by the looks of it, Vegas has the best odds uh, just based on rest to go through. And then we have the advantage on the Islanders. All right. I did not think uh, the New York Islanders were going to get through. I thought it was going to be Columbus for sure. Let's just compare here. So, oh, they got he here. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, you know, you think this would be the more... Oh no, they don't have defense. That's the difference right there. They have Patrick Kane on a seven, but oh, I feel bad for them because otherwise they would actually be, oh shoot, Drake Lee's actually nice, but um, no, I kind of feel bad for Columbus because if they actually had their team set up properly here, they probably would have beat the Islanders. They've got enough good players, but the Islanders have got depth. My goodness. Um, Shit, this is not going to be an easy series. Timofey Nazarov was a sweet pick in 2022. They got Trevor Wong as well. I forgot about that. Yikes, bro. Um, This is a sweet team for them. Holy. I'm surprised we have not seen this Islanders team before, to be honest. Like, that is, even if the defense is lacking a little bit, like, still, man. Holy crap. Um, what a freaking team this is. Nick Malik's up to an 83. Dang. Yeah, no, this is a, this is a sweet team. Barzell centering Zadina and Vaclav Churin. Jeez, what a team. Then the second line's also sick. Timothy Nazarov is probably the nicest player there. All right, who else is remaining? We got, I know we got Vegas. They're all right. Um, definitely lacking depth down the middle. And then no defense either. So they really shouldn't go anywhere, but they already have. And then we got Chicago, who consists of, okay, that's a good defense. That's that's surprising. We haven't seen that a lot. Oh my goodness. I knew they had Carl Klinge, but he was also only 24. Holy crap, that is a sick player there. Um yeah, no, this is a good team here in Chicago. I would expect them to just absolutely curb stomp the Golden Knights, but you never know. You never know what's going to happen. They they should totally go through. There's no reason. Like, it, goaltending gets older in the playoffs. Like, I, I don't know. Like, usually old goalies do just fine in the playoffs. Proven by Mike Smith and multiple other goalies over time. But um, we're going to struggle with this Islanders team, I would assume, as they have got a very good-looking forward group decent goaltending and some not bad defense in general 
All right, so here we go. Game one in um, Halifax against the New York Islanders. Let's see how it goes. All right, so we win game one, seven, one. Uh, I think that's just the difference in goaltending and defense, really, at this point, because our team is, I believe, fully healthy at this point. I don't think we have any injuries, which is the biggest thing, really. Actually, no, wait, we did lose Carter Hart. Okay, um, kind of forgot about that, to be honest. So, game two. Let's see what we do. And 7-4 win. That's 14 goals in two games. My goodness, 20 assists in 15 games for Lafreniere. He's really stepping it up right now. All right, game three. We have a 2-0 stranglehold on the Islanders. And Carter Hart is back, thank goodness. All right. So let's just, uh, let's get this line at, wow, 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 <laughs> 95 overall, hey, Lafreniere's finally jumping up, he's finally putting up enough points in the playoffs for us to actually do all right, okay, so, Breeze Bois is the odd man out, but we are going to leave him on the roster to hopefully boost his morale, because that would be a good thing, all right, um, Let's make sure Carter Hart's back in, because obviously he was much better than Comrie in the two games he or three games he actually played. So, all right, here we go. Game number four, we lost three to two, but you could blame that on Comrie not being clutch enough, maybe, um, or our defense, or our forwards. Like, it's the whole team. We lost by one goal, right? So, 2-1 um, series both ways here. Let's see what game number four holds, and... That is a 6-3 win. We have got a good shot here at knocking out the Islanders. Let's just, you know, let's just slow sim this one, okay? This is the conference finals. And, you know, honestly, I expected this Islanders team to do a little bit better, but the Darden Wheeler opened the scoring there. We had to shoot him 14-5 on home ice in game five. Yikes. All right, game, period two. It's a 6-0 game as Barker uh, opens the second period scoring. Byfield adds a shorthanded marker. Um, then Perfetti and Kraus also get goals, so we're just going to sim this period, and that is a 6-1 to one win as Vaclav Trend does get one on Carter Hart there. On just 24 shots, we got 37 shots on net there to crush the Islanders in five games there, my goodness gracious. All right, so game number six, Vegas survives another game there against the uh, Blackhawks, but... Let's see what happens here as uh, we advance, and looks like, does Chicago, oh, I didn't mean to hit edit lines, it just does that sometimes, so, I mean, this is a sick lineup, man, that's 93 Othman, 96 Laugh, 96 Barker, 98 Bedard, 94 Byfield, and 93 Perfetti, that's just sick, that is just a sick forward group, <laughs> the chemistry boost is insane, all right, is Chicago going to win here? Looks like they are, all right, so we are going to be taking on the Blackhawks, the two best teams, quote-unquote best teams. I think we're better, but no, that, that's a fair statement. The two best teams in the league from the regular season will be making it to the Stanley Cup Finals. No surprises there, really, and wow, they have uh, Kirby Doc playing fourth line minutes that is disgraceful but insane as well Matt Dumba's out so that might just be what cost them here as uh they only got one 90 rated defenseman we have two but <laughs> like come on man that's still sick all right so we obviously don't have home ice advantage on the Blackhawks but I don't think that's really gonna matter so game one in Chicago we win 6-2 big win boys 29 points in 19 games for Lafreniere um, let me just double check our playoff stats here. 34 points is our record for the team. Perfetti did it last year in just uh, 24 games. That's insane. All right. So game number two, we win three to two. Lafreniere's up to 31 points in just 20 games now. Jesus. All right. So game number three in Halifax, we lose four to three. Ouch, that one kind of stings, especially the overtime loss, but it happens, right? Game number four, we win 6-3. to three. Lafreniere beats Perfetti's record in less games, two less games to be exact. And um, yeah, I get the feeling Lafreniere is going to be around a 96 or 97 rated by the time these playoffs are over, just based on the off season, or the postseason he's had here. So here we go. Um, game number five in Chicago, we can win the Stanley Cup for the fourth season in a row. Four. Not four, three, two, four. Like we won four times. Or we will have won four times once if 
if, 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 not once, if we beat Chicago. So we outshoot them 8-2 eight, eight or 11-8. to eight. Cole Perfetti scores in the power play for us. Debrinket score, open the scoring actually on Carter Hart there just a minute and 12 seconds in. But second period, it's a 4-3 game for Chicago. All right. So this series might continue as Kubelik, Shore, and Klinge all score for Chicago. They outshoot us 21 to tw- or 22 to 21 at the end of the second. Uh, Barker and Wheeler, our sniper and power forward there, get goals for us. But we're going to jump in, try to win it here, man. We want to just, you know, get a win here if we can finish this up. And our offense is at 100 overall now. 94 defense and 89 goaltending is pretty filthy. So let's see what we can do. Um, I think we got this, boys. So if we win here tonight or, you know, in the next game or two, we will definitely have one of the most successful franchises in NHL history over the span of five seasons or so. Um, ho oh, ho, okay, lay the body, Jamie Barker. I, I like that, that wasn't even my doing, that was just Barker on his own, dropping somebody. I don't know if it was Debrinket or who it was, but yikes, that's a good chance. Can we not give the puck away right up the middle of the ice every time, Kubalik? No. <gasps> that was too close, man. That was a sick move there. Jamie Barker has 21 goals. 21. And he is not leading our team in points. Jesus Christ, man. 21 goals in the playoffs. That's insanity. All right, here comes Landon McCallum now. I'm going to drop it off. Kraus, oh my goodness, boys. Rebounds. Hello. We need to get to them, not just create them. Brace and Wheeler are going to get bumped once there. Going to drop it off. Lambos fires, rebound, and let's go. Landon McCallum does get on a rebound. Finally, I told you. If we get a rebound, it's going to be a goal. Let's go. It wasn't one of our top scorers, but sixth goal in the playoffs. Couldn't have come at a better time here, really, for us. Landon McCallum, way to tuck it away and just jump on that rebound. Robin Laner's 33-year-old body just can't get there in time, man. We're still in this. And I think the Hawks fans are a little worried here because they gave up the goal with such little time left. It's happened for them before where they've scored two goals in under two minutes in a Stanley Cup final. Oh my goodness, Perfetti just pulled the trigger. I was literally just watching the guy, like the defender's leg because I know if you get it past the first guy, you're usually going to be good. Okay, that was a terrible pass. What is this game? <laughs> Max Jones is on the Blackhawks. Interesting. Let's win a face-off just because. All right. We're still alive, boys. Um, not not we're still alive. They're still alive. Um, but really kind of choked what could have been the game there. And uh, 3-2 series at this point instead of a 3-1 for us still. And uh, we're headed to overtime, man. Top line's out. They have been producing numbers like we have never seen before. And really, if they get any more here... That's going to be like a record kind of year for them. So nice turn, Brant Clark. Oh my goodness, that was really close. <laughs> Man, the forecheck is a little bit too hard. I'm sorry. Like, yeah, I get it. It's Chicago. They're a good team. But for goodness sake, man. Th thank you. Finally, man. Jeez. They are literally putting so much pressure on me. Like, I couldn't even make a pass. Pass is literally spam the right trigger and you'll make a pass normally. I couldn't even make a pass. That's how much pressure was on me. Now it turns around and we have a chance to win four cups in a row on the power play. Wouldn't end any better here. And they do get the clear there to start. Great. All right. All right here we go. Great pickup, Krinkovic. Oh my goodness, man. These, this passing is just fantastic. Oh my goodness, McCallum. That was... I, I do like the second unit. Like, the playmakers on there create so much opportunity and space for each other. We just need Kraus crashing the net a little bit harder. And if he does... Oh. All right. Let's lose another face off, but Kraus does pick it up. Finds Bedard. Connor Bedard down to Krinkovic. Krinkovic over to Bedard. Krinkovic, Bedard. Back to Kernkovic, he's going to fire, yeah. Gotta shoot low, boys. It's hard to do, though, in this game. It really is. So we're going to leave Unit 2 out. They've only gotten about 30 seconds, but 
I can feel it. We're, we're getting close. We're getting close. We're going to get a goal here. Bedard plays it down low. Krinkovic in front. Oh my goodness, that was a great save. All right, Lambos over to Bedard, who coughs it up to... Who is that? Debrinkit? That might be Kubalik. Nope. Faxa, get out of here. All right, Lafreniere is on. We got the top unit out by the looks of it. Krinkovic over to Lafreniere. There it is. Your alternate captain, top pick by this team, wins the cup on home ice, or on away ice, sorry, in overtime on the power play. Beautiful ending. And that's four. Four. I kind of feel bad for Chicago, but I kind of don't. We did beat them in five two seasons ago, and we beat them in five yet again. Um, it's just the only difference two seasons ago is we were on home ice instead of them. So, yeah. Oh, well, what can you do? We're the better team, right? So, there you go, boys. Four Stanley Cups in a row. I know the celebration isn't quite as sweet when you're on away ice, but it is. it really is sweet, man. Four Cups now sees us surpass the New Jersey Devils for 10th place. We are in the top 10 in Stanley Cups now in NHL history. That's insane because we've only been in the league for eight seasons. Eight seasons, four cups. We are at a 50% Stanley Cup win rate right now. It is because of the team we have built through the draft and just the youth of this team. It's got some longevity, and it is scary because that is four in a row. Alexi Lafreniere, no question, is your Conn Smythe winner. Got the series winning goal, led his team with 35 or maybe 36 or even 37 points. What a playoff performance 37 points in just 21 22 games that's insanity i want to see jamie barker's stats at the end of this though because that's the barker was up there too it's just laughing here really had his breakout season here as far as becoming the superstar that we knew he was going to be but man jamie barker's got to feel happy about this man four in a row it doesn't get any sweeter than that we are pushing new york islander dynasty kind of levels here with the highlanders if we win five in a row it doesn't get any better than that wow so Raphael plus gonna lift the cup for the first time his rookie year couldn't have gone any better playing fourth line center I believe for us he crushed it Lawson Krause had a fantastic year as well um playing on that third line you know he was getting some power play minutes and stuff I do believe Pascal Brisbois is going to go up in morale just because he's on the uh bench for this cup win so that's always awesome but you know the Blackhawks fans stick around man it's not that often that you get to see the Stanley Cup lifted live, even if it isn't for your team. Obviously, Chicago, we had to beat because they have won six, if not seven, Stanley Cups here. They have won, they've won six in history. So yeah, we are, we're catching up to them. And they've, that's got a sting because they've had two shots at it now in the last three seasons to win the Cup. And they've blown it both times against us. So there you go, boys. Four time four-time Stanley Cup champions. They've got two fingers up. It should be four. It should be the whole freaking hand, man. That's awesome. What a performance yet again. That was so satisfying because the second that I had Lafreniere transition to like the backward skating and line up the shot, I'm like, that thing's in. We've beat Laner and that's the cup. So there you go, we surpass, or we surpass, we pass our goal of winning the Stanley Cup. Lafreniere puts up a team high 36 point playoff performance. What a run it was from him, but oh my god. Jamie Barker scores 22 goals in just 19 games. The man is an absolute machine. I know he scores a lot. Like, he normally hits double digits in the playoffs. That's a fair statistic. But plus 20, 31 points in just 19 games. 
what? Oh, that's filthy. Guys. 29.7% shooting. You look at the rest of our team. Yes, Landon McCallum was high. Yes, Brennan Othman and Lawson Kraus were high, but... Okay, Paquette, no. He played four games. That doesn't count. <laughs> um, holy crap, man. We had two guys that were just lighting the lamp on a consistent basis when they shot the puck. That is disgusting. This team is so sick. The thing that's unfortunate is we are probably going to have to get rid of Brennan Othman here in a fairly short amount of time, but... Let's see what happens here. So the Chicago Wolves, Vegas' team, if Vegas had beat um, Chicago and then beat us, then the, that would have been all Vegas. That would have been insane, but they didn't quite get there. They only made it to the conference finals, but there you go. Your Calder Cup champions, as well as, obviously, your Stanley Cup champions. So um, I think the 30... 30 goal mark there for Lafreniere was in oh Dallas wow Dallas moves up nine picks New Jersey moves up one and the Rangers move up nine picks as well that is filthy all right we had Columbus's picks so yeah our picks nowhere on the board which is okay I'm not exactly worried about that and uh yeah this team is just so set up for such a long-term run and success and I think what we need to focus on more so than the draft now is really just uh, just building longevity with this team and focusing on actually winning. Um, that is going to be the main concept. But we do have retiring players, and we will see Patrick Kane retire with 1,558 points. That's crazy. Um, Kessel retires with quite a lot as well. Same with Stamkos, Backstrom. Then it drops off a bit. Everlay Doughty with 800-plus points each there. Tatar. Johansson or Marcus Johansson and uh, Roman Yossi there all with 700 plus points that's crazy lots of good players in here still lots of you know top end kind of picks and uh, yeah lots of guys over that 200 point mark in the NHL uh, as far as goalies go we will see wow Sergei Bobrovsky calls it quits there where was he playing? Uh, Springfield Thunderbirds. He was in Florida. Okay, so he did go through their system. 446 goalie wins is pretty crazy. Um, Bernier's up there with 329. That's actually not bad. He played 700 games in the NHL. Where was he drafted? 11th overall. Damn. Okay. So, guys, to end off this episode, I'm going to show you the progress reports. We see Bedard jump up to a 94. Same with Barker. Um, O'Brien and Lafreniere both at 93s. Othman's up to a 91, Byfield at 92, Clark Perfetti both at 90s. So that is how many 90 plus rated players? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 90 plus rated players. <laughs> oh, Bryson Wheeler. Damn it, we're going to have to trade Perfet or, uh, Othman right away. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow, um, that's insane. Lambos up to an 86, that's beautiful. Hart only at an 88, uh, only, only. Yeah, he's just one of the best goalies in the league. Don't get me wrong there. And then, you know, it kind of drops off, which is actually good, um, just based on the fact that we won't have to pay guys so much. Um, Del Mastro's up to a 79, that's pretty decent. In the system, Breeze Bois is a 79, so we can probably move Comrie as well. I think that'll be a possibility. Um, Korzak and Wiesblatt were definitely looking to move up. Same thing with David Mankateshin. Um, yeah, no, there's definitely options here. Sturback still only 77 overall. Didn't have a high scoring season. Oh my good, he did. He scored 59 points in 66 games as a defensive defenseman. Where's the growth, buddy? Come on. <laughs> and Murray Weeks up to a 76. Nice. Um, did he break his point record against 60 freaking points by a defensive defenseman, man? That's that's insane. It doesn't get better than that, really. Jeez, this team is sweet. So I do want to show you guys the awards as well, just to kind of give you an idea of how good our team really was. This year, obviously, awards are a factor in every season, but um, four-time Stanley Cup champions, that's just dominance. That is just straight dominance here through the 2020s. Um, Chicago Buffalo obviously winning the last two uh, President's Trophies, but that's okay. 
um, as yeah, we have just been dominating the Prince of Wales trophies as well as the Stanley Cup. Uh, Johnston is your Art Ross winner. Klinge is your Hart winner. Boakfast wins the Norris for the second time in three years. Lady Bing goes to Barbashev. Oh, I thought that was the uh, Con Smythe for a second. I was like, what? No. Braxton Wheeler, or Braxton, Bryson Wheeler is your Con Smythe. Or... Oh, wow, I can't speak. Bryson Wheeler is your Calder Memorial Trophy winner there. Wins Rookie of the Year. Good for him. As you can see, we've got three of the last five guys on there with Bedard and Perfetti as well. But Con Smythe goes to Lafreniere for the second time in four seasons. Vesna goes to, no question, Vasilevsky two of the last three years. <laughs> William M. Jennings also goes to Vasilevsky. Lou Hughes wins the Masterton. Jack Adams goes to Winnipeg's coach. Uh, the Selkie goes to Lundell for the second year in a row. Good for him. Ted Lindsay goes to Klinge, and Bedard is your Rocket. Bedard was the Rocket winner two years in a row. Hmm. We need to go check his stat. I guess 60 goals, yeah. 60 goals might do it. Um... I was like, oh, yeah, he only scored 100 points. Yeah, but 60 goals. 60 freaking goals. That's a lot. That was best in the league. Wow. Guys, this is why I wanted to kind of draft Aiden Woolley. It's because, yes, he, he was very good. It's just he was a third liner for our system fit instead of a second or first. So, wow. Um. Also, points by rookies. That's the thing that we just never checked on. And wait, what? Hold up, that's a glitch. That is a big glitch. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> um, only Erickson popped up. Like what? Yeah, Braxton Wheeler had six. He had 44 goals as a rookie. Oh, but he's going to be filthy. Ryan, wait, hold on. Ryan Paling did not have a point. What? Played three games, didn't have a point. That's kind of rough. Okay. Um, let's try this again. All right, so we're in the entire league. Rookie skater. That's a glitch. That is a glitch, but you look at our team here. Let's go to rookie skaters here for Halifax, and no data displayed. It's interesting, um, because I'm pretty sure Rax and Wheeler, with 63 points in his rookie year, um, is a rookie skater. Yeah, um, no, he crushed it. There's no question he crushed it, and man, he's going to turn into a monster. 6'2", 203. As a sniper, oh, yeah, look out NHL, Braxton we or Bryson Wheeler's coming for you. His skating's just going to go up. Um, I assume his defense will probably be his lowest stat just based on his size, um, but we will see his puck skill sense his skating go up over the next season or two. And 44 markers in your rookie season doesn't get any freaking better than that. Wow. Um, wow. Wow. <laughs> How did O'Brien do? 55 is second highest point total for him in his career. He's not having, you know, crazy defensively scoring kind of career, but, you know, he's winning cups, so what can you say, man? Like, he is going to be one of the greatest defensemen of all time. It's more just how many points can he really put up as an offensive defenseman now. So, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. Four Stanley Cups. Um, I'll pull up Islander stats for you guys next episode when we get started with that like before the draft and everything but my goodness gracious we have got a dynasty on our hands here in halifax and we're just eight seasons in we're just eight seasons in man this is a dynasty material team but anyways if you guys made it to the end of the video are enjoying this series so far and you know want to show your support make sure you go down below and drop a like on the video also make sure you leave comments to possibly get featured there you saw i we do comments every single episode but really it doesn't like the, the comments aren't going to as drastically affect the team here as we move forward but at the same time you know we should actually yeah, i just thought of something um we did not pay harrison o'brien before this season yeah see he's actually not too bad on price but he's only wants what 12.1 million see i think we could get him for cheaper just by a little bit um and then obviously lambos mccallum and kraus kraus probably won't be returning so that's too bad but mccallum and lambos we will be holding on to and then we will most likely have to move the nine and a half million dollar Osman deal there what about goalies comrie's not coming back for two million not when we have brisebois in the system for another three seasons 
one, two, okay, only two seasons, but still, still, um, that's a sick goalie to back up, Carter Hart, yeah, um, so we will, we will have to make a move or two, probably going to trade Osman this season, even though he is 91 overall, that's just filthy, um, <laughs> So yeah, I'm looking forward to the future of this series. We got lots of time left here, even though you know the majority of our players are on pretty big contracts now. Um, this team's just going to continue to win and possibly get even better. I don't know if they can get much better at this point. I don't want to say they're capping out because they got so much longevity left. You look at this; everybody on this team is under 28. Um, that's scary. I mean, except for Kraus, who's 29, and he's probably not going to stay, but. I'm just really hoping these guys don't want, like, millions and millions of dollars because they've literally only been playing in the AHL, except for... Okay, Mercy is actually a pretty good contract there. Um, McCallum's 2.9. Okay, that's that's good. It's Lambos I'm worried about. Yeah. Eight years, 8.2. He's not worth that. And then obviously, you know, O'Brien, I'll do the rule of 85 on all this to start off next episode, most likely. And then we'll trade Othman, we'll get moving forward with stuff like that, and uh, this team will shape up just fine, because obviously Bryson Wheeler is going to come in, fill in that second line role, we're going to move Bedard up to the top line, get a plus 5 chemistry boost there moving forward, which is scary. Um, we've been waiting a while for this, just to you know get the right fit on the system so we don't have anything below a plus 3 chemistry boost in this team. But yeah, that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is Etanios signing out, and see ya.